Becoming Mark Twain is fun for me. You know, you just mess up your hair and uh, slip into a white suit that's kind of rumpled. Pick up a pipe. I can't talk without it after all these years. My name is McAvoy Lane, but I'm more recognized as Mark Twain. Mark Twain was the father of America's literature. He left us about 28 volumes, but the ones you might remember most from your childhood were the boy books, Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. And maybe as you got a little older, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court. My favorite is Roughing It, because there's a lot in there about Nevada. I arrived riding a small yellow donkey. So small, my feet touched the ground on both sides. And he was able to bend around and bite me on the legs. <laughs> Before Mark Twain tapped me on the shoulder, I was in radio and in a perfect place, the Hawaiian Islands. I was off the air at 10 o'clock and on a wave at 10 after. I had everything a boy could want except skiing. So I rented a cabin here at Tahoe for five days. I was so excited I could hardly sleep the first night, but it snowed five feet overnight. It took them five days to plow up to where I was. I thought it was the worst stroke of luck, but it turned out to be the best. I threw darts for two days, then my elbow gave out, and I sat down and on the coffee table was the complete essays of Mark Twain. And I had cabin fever by then, my brain was soft. So that seed was planted in fertile ground. It took me 10 years to read everything he gave us before I had the courage to go out and have a white suit made and started visiting classrooms in our schools. I would see 10 schools a week and I'd go see secondary schools Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then on Thursday, I'd go see a couple elementary schools. And then Friday, I'd always schedule a middle school to keep from getting soft. And I'd come home on a gurney. When I first started portraying Mark Twain, I was 45 years old. So I wanted to sound older, I wanted to sound 70. So I would affect my voice. Well now, old Jim Blaine would get comfortably and sociably charged and tell the story of his grandfather's old ram. Now I'm older than Twain would be. I'll be 80 this summer. So I'm older than he was when he died. Now I'm trying to sound younger. <laughs> but you still throw in that little Missouri uh, accent. I must confess to you, I have no formal education. In truth, I am as unlettered as the backside of a tombstone. But I've gained worlds of knowledge at second hand. Uh, none of it correct. <laughs> no, all you need for success in this life is ignorance and confidence. <laughs> and then success is sure. <laughs> My very favorite part about being Mark Twain is the way people react to being near him and asking questions or perhaps sharing a story of their own. It always brings out the best in people. Mark Twain days! Piper's Opera House rests up there on B Street in Virginia City, and it is the shrine for me. The luckiest break I ever got was when I was first starting out, I got a call from Carol Piper Marshall, the great granddaughter of John Piper. She said, McAvoy, I hear you're portraying Mark Twain in the schools. I said, yes, I'm loving it. I'm seeing 10 schools a week. She said, how'd you like to do two shows a day, six days a week for four months at Piper's? Over 200 shows. And I got to try out new material on a live audience every day because some of Twain's writing is wonderful literature but does not recite. And you find out what works with a live audience. So by the end of that summer of 88, 35 years ago, thanks to Carol, Piper, Marshall, I wasn't ready for prime time, but I was ready to go out on the road. On the 30th of September this year, I'll be standing on that stage in my last program as Mark Twain. When I laid down my pen at the Territorial Enterprise, 
I had four horse whippings and two duels owing to me. And yet when I said goodbye to Virginia City, Carson City, Lake Tahoe, I knew I was saying goodbye to the most vigorous enjoyment of life I would ever be afforded. Those days were full to the brim with the wine of life, and there have been no others like them. Mark Twain liked to look at the good side of human nature. Toward the end, after his wife Olivia died, he got a little bit sour and went off on the dark side of Mark Twain. But before Livy left this earthly realm, she taught him to use his humor like the wheel on an opera glass to focus our attentions on more serious matters at hand so he could comment on our society and human nature with his humor in such a way that it would stick with us. Like, always do right. This will gratify some people and astonish the rest. That's wonderful wisdom. When I first started out being Mark Twain, I made myself a promise. One, have fun. Two, don't play loosely with his material and make Twain scholars happy. And I've stuck to that all 35 years, and I'm proud of that. <laughs>